Um, and so here's a homework problem. Um, uh, so let's say the life of a calculator battery is approximately normally distributed, right? So you're told right there, it's gonna be a bell-shaped curve with a mean of 75 hours and a standard deviation of 10 hours. So we're given some information to work with. In part A, what is the probability that a single battery randomly selected from the population will have a life between 70 and 80 hours? So before we can even get to Excel, we need to make sure we know what we're working with. So step one, uh, we need to make sure we know what our sample means that we're interested in. So remember, a sample is a smaller subset that I'm pulling. And what are the means associated with that sample? What is our sample means that we're working with? And what we're saying is, hey, if I pull out a single battery that's my as my sample, what are the odds that that sample will have a life between 70 and 80 hours? So actually our sample means our X bar is the 70 and the 80. So that's why it's uh, important that we understand the difference between a sample and a population. Remember a sample comes from a subset, the single battery, and our population is given to us in the story. So here's our mean of 75 hours because that's supposedly the life of our calculator batteries for our company. Uh, now we learned about a couple theorems that allow us to work with our sampling distribution. So this right here, this symbol is our population mean. So according to the screen story, what's our uh, population mean then? 75, fantastic. So that is 75, that's gonna be our mu. And then here's our theorem two. This is our standard error. So we're going to take our population standard deviation and divide it by the square root of our n. That's our sample size. So what's our standard deviation according to the story? 10, fantastic. And what's our sample size again? How many are we testing? Just one. Okay, so that's our standard error. We'll take 10 divided by the square root of one. And if you, um, with the mental math, we know the square root of one is just gonna be one. So you could put that into a calculator, um, but our standard error then is going to be 10. So these are the different variables that we need before we can get into our formulas. Now let's go ahead and move into step three. We want to define the event of interest. So recall in the question part A, it said, well, what are the odds that that sample that we pull is going to be between 70 and 80 hours? So we would write the probability as our sample mean, our X bar right here, and um, it's gonna be between 70 hours and 80 hours. So this is where we now have to convert each of our sample means into a Z value. Since we have two sample means, we get to do it twice. So as you can see here, I'll go ahead and um, put in our first sample mean, that's the X bar of 70. Then we'll minus the population mean, that's the 75 from the story. And then in our denominator, that's the population standard deviation of 10, divided by the square root of n. Okay, So that's the setup to convert our 70. What's the setup going to look like when I do it for my other sample mean, the 80? So what we're going to replace out or change is our sample mean. But all we're going to do is we're going to change that x bar in the front into the 80. So you can see I've got a negative 0.5 for my 70 when I converted it into a C value, and then the 80 is a uh, positive 0.5. And if you're not sure, you can look here, right? My sampling error for 70 is gonna be negative because 70 is smaller than 75. Whereas when we converted our 80, 80 minus 75, that's a positive number. We're gonna be um, uh, ending up with a positive Z value. So we'll be on the right side of the curve. And so um, we'll go ahead and now use Excel to find the desired probability. So if you've got your Excel file open, we're going to be using this formula right here. So uh, here's my chapter seven file. This is what it looks like. And I do have all the formulas in one place. We've got some examples here and uh, the sampling distribution formulas over here, just to remind you as an example. But we're gonna go ahead and use this formula right here. Um, so I'm going to just zoom in a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to see. But we'll go ahead and type in equals 
norm.s.dist. Remember that s just means, hey, we've already standardized, we've already converted our x bar into a z. Close parentheses. And so we had two z values. We had a 0.5 and a negative 0.5. Remember when we're ever working with two z values, we're working in between, we always want to use the bigger z value first. So we'll go ahead and type in the 0 0.5 comma true, close parentheses, and then now we have to do um, the minus and norm dot s dot dist of the other z value, the z value that represents 70. Go ahead and do negative 0 0.5 comma true. Now if you forget and you accidentally swap and do the smaller z value first, all that's going to happen is you're going to end up with a negative probability. But we know that's not possible. You can't have negative chance of happening. Um, so all you have to do is remove the negative sign in front and you'll be okay. So just kind of a heads up if you accidentally forget. But when we hit enter, what do we get for the probability that our single battery is going to last between 70 and 80 hours. 0.383 or 3829, depending on rounding. So hopefully you got the probability. This probability piece should feel familiar. You learned about it in chapter six, so we're just reinforcing same concepts in that it's a normal distribution, um, but now we're converting it. So there's our Z value that we're gonna plug in. So now that we've done it by hand on uh, this screen, right? You had a calculator. Um, let's go ahead and do it in Excel, and then you can see which is your preference. So if you scroll towards the top, there's this box here that says, hey, here's a way to um, get find our Z values, but it only works for means by using the standardized formula. You learned about the standardized formula in chapters three and six, but we have to make a slight tweak to it. So I'm gonna show you how that works. But I have an example here, right? So uh, you'll type in standardize, whatever your x or x bar is, right, the sample mean, that's what you plug in there, your population mean, that's the second number here, and then here's the new piece or the adjustment. The standard deviation when we plug in is that standard error, that population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So I think you can see it over here on um, the right in my formula, this down at the bottom in the denominator that's what also needs to go into Excel. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. We'll do the 70 first. Go ahead and type in equals standardize. Right, so I'm just gonna click on it to make it a little faster. Um, our X, we were gonna convert that 70, comma. Our population mean for all batteries was 75, comma. Now again, here's our standard deviation. Remember, it's the standard deviation of our sampling distribution or the standard error. So I'll go ahead and type in our um, population standard deviation, which was the 10. And I have to do divide and then square root SQRT parentheses. And we're only pulling one battery. So my N is that one. And then I'll close parentheses I think I got enough parentheses there. And that's how you would do it with Excel. Go ahead and hit enter. Hopefully you got the same as what we got earlier for 70 when we did it with a calculator or what you see here on the screen when I hit enter. That's the negative 0.5. Let's go ahead and do it again though, also for the 80. So you can see how that works um, on the other end. Again, we'll do type in equals standardize. And then we'll, now we're converting our sample mean of 80, comma, our mean still 75 for the population, comma, and then our standard error, or the standard deviation of our sampling distribution, meaning we're accounting for all possible distributions. We'll go ahead and do the 10 divided by the square root, parentheses, our one battery, that was our N, close out, and you should get the same thing as if you were doing it with a calculator on that formula. You get the positive 0.5. As you can see, either way, whether you're doing it in Excel or you're doing it with a calculator, you still need to understand the variables and know where they go. You still need to know what the sample mean is, our X bar. You still need to find the population mean, our mu. And you still need to know the population standard deviation and our N. 
So it's just how you put it in, which technology you want to use. So take a moment, make a decision. Do you want to use Excel or do you want to use a calculator? Commit to it. And then that's what you'll be doing for the rest of the, the course whenever we're working with sampling distributions, which is like almost every chapter. Cool. Let's continue on. Same homework problem. It's got a part B. It's going to change things up. What is the probability that 16 randomly sampled batteries from the population will have a sample mean life of between 70 and 80 hours? So in this part B, what has changed? What's the different piece of information we're now working with? The 16, right? Instead of working with one battery, because you told your boss, I only tested one battery, and that's going to tell us everything we need to know. They might say, maybe you should test a couple more. So here's our change in part B. We're going to sample 16 batteries and see how it goes. So again, our sample size, or our N, has changed. And so uh, if you look at the two formulas here, um, we still see our sample means are still between 70 and 80. Our population mean, our mu, is still 75, right? There's my 75 behind the, the minus. My population standard deviation hasn't changed. That's still the 10. The only thing that has changed is our n. So now instead of one battery being tested, we're now testing 16 batteries. So now I want you to go ahead and make your choice. You could either um, use a calculator to solve for it or use Excel to solve for it. Um, let's give it a shot. Okay, so I've got a negative two, and that'll be for the 70. And we'll, I'll go ahead and also do it in Excel too. Um, but if we convert the 70, it'll be negative two. And when we convert the 80, it'll be uh, positive two. If you're using a calculator, something to note is that order of operations is very important. You can't just type in starting with 70 and work your way down. It's going to give you the wrong answer. I always recommend do it in parts. Find the sampling error that's um, subtracting the top first, right? 70 minus 75 gives us negative five. And then solve the standard error or the denominator. So then solve 10 divided by the square root of 16 or 10 over four, right? So that, I don't know the exact number. And then divide the two numbers. So um, if you got something different, it might've been the way you entered the information. And then when we go into Excel, we'll go ahead and work uh, through the same formulas uh, to plug in to find the probability. So let's go ahead and just do it together on the Excel side. I'm going to go ahead and clear these out Oops. so we can start from scratch. Okay. So let's go ahead and use Excel to convert our 70 and 80 again. So I'll type in equals standardize. I'll type in my 70 comma our mean of 75 comma and then our standard error that's the 10 divided by the square root right so that's a big change and for some of you if you didn't want to retype the whole thing all you had to do is go in and just change the one to a 16 and that also will give us our updated information so that's our 70 converted we can do it again for the 80 i'll type in 80 comma 75 comma 10 divided by the square root of 16 and then go ahead and hit enter and that's where we get 2 for our z value of 80 and then now let's go ahead and find the probability right so regardless we have to do this part we're using excel so we'll do with the big z value first oops and then minus our other z value, the smaller one. I don't know why it's not showing the whole thing. There we go. There's my formula. So there's my norm.dist of 2 minus my norm s.dist of negative 2. And then that's where we'll get 0.9545.